Welcome to another Code Conversation. In this chat, I'm talking with Gerard Nayela about one of those topics that I've always had some niggling confusion about. How to set up your Python project when that little script you've been working on turns into something a bit larger. As it turns out, this has implications for how you call your Python modules from the command line, how you structure your imports, how easy it is to configure tools like a code formatter, and when the time comes, how to package it for distribution. One of the pain points I've had when working with Python is that sometimes you end up having to do a lot of navigating on the command line to call Python from the right place, or else your imports won't work. Also, being able to call a Python utility project from anywhere with a simple command can end up being a bit of a rabbit hole. Most of the time, these tasks end up being a bit more complicated than you might expect because there are seemingly many ways to go about it. In this code conversation, Gerarna will be taking me through the Python sanctioned way to achieve all these things easily by setting up a pyproject.toml file and creating an editable install of my package for me to use and develop my project pain free. Using a PyProject Toml file and creating an editable install may sound like something you might only need when distributing your package. However, it's something that will make developing anything larger than a single file script much easier and less headache prone. I'm Ian Curry, a real Python team member, and I'm with another team member here. Hi, everyone. I'm Gay Daniela, also with RealPython. Our starting point here is that we have a little CLI app that will basically echo whatever I pass into it. I passed it in a message, sleep tight little man club. And then a snake says to me, sleep tight little man club. If we go over to the code for this, the entry point file CLI, which is the one we called, is just taking the arguments that were passed in. The arguments in this case are sleep tight little man club. And it's calling a say function from the snake module. The snake module looks like this. We've got our snake drawing ASCII art. We've got a bubble function, which will contain the message in a speech bubble. Here you can see the top of the speech bubble, the sides of the speech bubble, and the bottom of the speech bubble. And finally, you have the say function, which you call from the CLI module, which will print a bubble and print the snake. So it looks like that the snake is saying this message. All right, so currently the structure of this project that we have is just a CLI file, which takes the arguments from the command line and feeds them into this say function from the snake module. We don't have this contained in any folders apart from the real Python folder, which is just a general working folder. You can ignore the PyCache and the VS Code. The VS Code just contains some settings to make the text bigger for this recording. So what we want to do is start to package this all together. And again, packaging is not just for putting things onto PyPI, but also just to make your life easier. So Gerarna, how do we get started with packaging? So if we're just looking at the console again. So one kind of downside to this is that uh, we're calling a program called CLI. And if you haven't heard it before, it's a kind of weird uh, abbreviation for command line interface. Uh, so it's not really saying anything about the project we're actually working with. One thing that would be nice is to just have a better name for this. Of course, we could rename CLI to be a better name, but uh, it is kind of describing the role that this module plays in the project. So an even better solution would be to actually create a directory that contains our project. So I guess we can do something like create a directory that we call maybe snake say or something to that effect. That sounds good. So I'll just create a directory here and we'll call this snake say. So is this going to be the eventual name of the command? This will be the name of essentially our package as we think of it. And then we'll, we can see a few different ways that we can use this as a command. And it will definitely show up in some of the commands we're using. Cool. 
So I will just move these files into that folder then, right? Yep, perfect. Okay, I'm going back to the command line now. If I was just to say Python snake say, that's probably not going to work, right? Uh, let's try it. Not quite. And here it's actually pointing out the solution for us about something about the main module. But before we do that, let's try to now run Python snake say cli.py. Right. We'll use the, just the path to the file. Exactly. And then we'll have to put in some, let's use the same message here. Yeah. Cool. That works. It still works. Right. But that's not, not ideal because we've got sort of more to type now. And we're still having to call the CLI, which might not be obvious to someone who doesn't know what a CLI is. Yes. So the way that Python has set up this is that you can actually call directories instead of Python files. To do this, Python then needs to kind of know, well, where is the entry point then inside of this directory? Because the directory doesn't make sense by itself. Yeah, because a directory isn't a Python file. Right. It is just a way to organize files. Hmm. So what it kind of says within the big error message we're getting here, it says, can't find main module inside of real Python snake say. Right. What does that mean? The double underscore main double underscore, which we often just call dunder main. This is then just a convention, really, but it's being used actively by the Python interpreter to look for entry points, essentially. So what should I actually do when you call a directory? Uh -huh. And what it does then is that if there is a file that's called dunder main.py, then I call that file. Okay. So we can start out just by renaming cli.py to be dunder main.py. Okay, that sounds cool. So if we take a CLI and we're calling dunder main, Dunder being a abbreviation for double underscore. So that reads underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot py is the new name of the file. Exactly. Okay, so what effect does this have? Now we can go back and try to call snake say one more time, just directly. Python snake say. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't passed any arguments in there, so let's let's actually pass in some arguments. Wow, cool. That's a lot more readable. Yeah. So now immediately we kind of made our command to run this simpler. And we have, we kind of follow some of the conventions within Python. So these standard main.py files, they might look a little bit weird and scary, but they are kind of convention that you can use everywhere and you'll get used to them and kind of know, okay, this is actually where my entry point to a program is defined. So this is where the program will start running. So you don't call main dot py usually explicitly you you call the folder it might not make much sense that you're calling a folder but the way python works is that it says if someone were to call a folder so they say python with the folder name i'm going to treat that as a module and if that module has a dunder main that means i can run that module okay so currently we have our script running in this way, where we can just say snake say, we don't have to call the actual CLI file, which is now named Dunder main. And I've seen it's common to use a dash M or minus M flag here, which I understand to mean module to basically do the same thing. We're saying Python M snake say, which is the module, right? Yeah. But if we try and run this, we run into a module not found error and saying it can't find snake. And it's saying it can't find snake from main.py. So let's go to the line. So it's failing on line three here, saying it can't find snake. Why is this? Yeah, so if you go back a little bit to the terminal first. So the difference between what we used to run, Python snake say, and now Python minus m snake say, is that this Python snake say directly actually looks in the file system and it runs the directory which we talked about, running a directory means running the double underscore main file. With the minus M, what we're asking Python to do is to kind of look in its path for a module or directory called snake say. You say look in its path, which path do you mean? Right. There's kind of two different paths that are fighting here. So in the command line interface, so in the terminal, we were kind of, I guess now you can see we're at C real Python, and that's kind of our active path. 
in the term. Right, our current working directory. Right. And then Python maintains another path, which just contains all the libraries that Python has installed, both the standard library. So if you do things like import math, it knows where to find this. But also if you've kind of installed other packages like Pandas or Django or things like this, it's able to find them. Right. So when we install something like Django and we say import Django, that's basically Python knows where to look for that. Exactly. So, so it kind of has a list of different paths uh, mm -hmm. that it can search for Django. So in a similar way to the command line environment, having a path variable where it searches for all executables, Python has its own path version where it, it will search for a module when you try and import it. Exactly. And as all things in Python, this path is something that we can play with and change. However, that's a really bad idea. Really bad idea. Okay, but it's so common. Yes, it's one of those things that, but it works. So let's, let's just do it. It does work, yeah. The problem with it is that it doesn't really scale. Right. So if you kind of start doing it with one script and then it kind of, you sometimes then end up being, okay, now I need to change the path again for I'm trying to run this with another script and things get messy. So the problem here is that this snake module is not in the path, right? Exactly. So how might we add that then? Yeah, and if we kind of scale back a little bit because we had the exact same code working when we just do Python snake, say, without the minus M. Right, okay, so because this, this one works. Right. But the M doesn't. Exactly. And this is because the minus M treats the path slightly differently. Mm. So, so there is a convenience, essentially, when you're running things, that the current directory is put into path. Right. Okay, so when you run Python snake, say, then the current directory gets added to path. Right, and in that case, that is the snake, say, directory. While we do the Python minus M, this current directory is just the real Python directory, not the real Python snake, say. Yes, so when we run just Python snake, say, the directory that's added to Python's path is the snake say directory within this the real Python directory that we're working. It's this directory here. Exactly. With the main and the snake py. Yeah. So then therefore it finds the snake py file. Okay. So then we can find the main.py file basically. And the snake.py, which needs to import to actually print the bubble and the snake. And then in the M version, does something get added to path here? I think on the minus M version, it still adds our current path, but it doesn't add the snake say path or snake say directory to path. Okay, so it's, it's not looking at the sub directories. Right. So because snake from here is kind of within the snake say directory, it's saying, okay, I, I can't fight snake. It's not going recursively searching in the sub directories for all the files. Correct. Okay, so how do we fix this? There's a couple of different ways, and let's start with the simplest one, I guess, would be that if you go into your um, code, and now, because snake is now part of the snake say kind of package, we can say from snake say import snake. Uh -huh. And now we can test it. Now it should run. Here we go. Yay. Okay, cool. So let's go back to the code for a second. So we're in snake say, but at the same time, we're saying from snake say. So this code, when it's running, it's not sure where it is. If we call it with the dash M, we have to sort of assume that since we're calling it from outside of this package, that everything starts from that point. So we have to explicitly say from outside the package, we have to go into the package and get snake from snake say. Yes. And what we're really doing here is that we started using something we'll call absolute imports. Mm -hmm. So our import snake earlier, typically I'll just call it local import. It right. is technically also an absolute import, but it kind of behaves a little bit differently because it depends on this dynamic path that's being set. Right. It depends on where you're calling your code from, because it will only work if you call it from inside the module in certain ways. But it starts to break when you're using the minus M flag in other places. Whereas this has a more explicit pointer towards the snake module. Exactly. So now it seems like we've solved the problem. So now try to run the one without minus M. 
And so we've kind of moved our problem a little bit. Right. And really the explanation for this is the same as earlier, that it's looking in a different place. And now, as we saw earlier, Snake was in path when we didn't use MindSum. But that means that Snake says not in path, essentially. So now we've kind of flip-flopped our problem. It works in one way if we do the absolute import like this, but it won't work in the way we were doing before. Mm. And that's because of the difference because of the snake say without the M or the snake say with the M. Right. Those give different paths, essentially. So different right. places they search for. Okay. So is there a way we can make it work for both? Yes. And uh, what you might be tempted to do is now, again, well, let's just fix the path. Let's append to path and put everything on path. Right. And you do that with sys.path.append. And then you'd manually sort of type out the path that you would want to put in here, which would then you have to double escape it because it's Windows, uh, real Python, and mess around with things like that. Right. Which is really common. I mean, you'll probably see that in a lot of places. And a lot of people might even recommend this to you as being sort of the simpler solution. Yeah, it, it will solve problems seemingly right now. But again, it doesn't really scale well. What's a typical scaling problem that you might run into with this? So one is that you're, if you kind of had several projects that kind of start talking together, then you might need to add more stuff to path. And another thing is that if you would share this with me and my file uh, layout looks differently, then I would need to go in and change all the paths right. to, to match mine. Yeah, because of you might have a different drive or you might be on a different system which doesn't have drive letters. Right. And that just gets really messy really quickly. Exactly. Okay, so we want to stay away from SysPath as much as possible, I think. Yeah, we can just stay completely away from it. What we want to do is that we will find a way where things can work much more intuitively, in a sense. And the way to do that is instead of trying to kind of sneak around Python's import system, we'll play on the same team as the import system, essentially. That sounds good. So what that entails is essentially that we'll install our package Install our package. Does that mean we have to upload something to PyPI and then download it with pip and stuff like that? Or what does that involve? So it does involve pip. It means that we'll do pip install, but we don't need to upload it anywhere. We can still just have it locally. Most of the time you use pip install, you do things like pip install pandas or pip install Django, and it runs off on the internet to find those things. But you can also just say, I want to pip install my directory, snakesake, and then that will happen without no one on the internet seeing your code, and it will happen without you running off to the internet. And it will make our lives easier. It will make our lives much easier because then we can just use consistent imports everywhere. Uh huh. And does that have any other advantages? One very cool thing is that now we've, we've so far seen that we are very dependent on where in the file tree we're kind of running things from. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to make sure we're in the right folder and using the right way to call the thing from the right place. Exactly. And, and say that we had a different project where we wanted a cute snake, I would have had a really hard time to import snake from snake, say, uh -huh. without at least doing some of these weird syspath mm -hmm. things that we talked about. But after I install it, it will actually be available from anywhere I run my code as long as it kind of installed into that environment. From anywhere. Wow. Sounds like a superpower. It is. So how do we get there? Let's see. This is also something where you find lots of different ways of doing things. Right. Yeah. There is some history here. Yeah, because this is one of the sort of pain points of Python, right? That there's a lot of people coming into Python who, who might criticize that there's not some kind of standard system here. Is that justified? Uh, yes and no. So there is a lot of history to Python packaging. And it kind of goes back all the way to when Python was kind of first, I guess, invented and released, which was about the same time as the World Wide Web was invented and made available. So there was really no thinking at all about how do we distribute code. So packaging was not really a thing. And then in the beginning of the kind of Python 1 era, people would kind of just share files with each other. Just single files. Single files or scripts and things like this. Right. And you would kind of maybe send them by email or maybe you had some server where people could. Huh. It's a lot more of the shell script tradition where you just put a ton of code in one file and then you just pass that around. Yeah, 
So that that kind of Python's history back in the day. Right. That was kind of so you didn't have any of these problems really with the import because you just tried to keep it all in one file. Uh, partly, yeah. And then you could, even if you were importing things, that would typically be something fairly simple. Right. So then I think it was around the year 2000 and when Python 2 came online, the first distutils was the first kind of module for trying to distribute things. Okay, so here's the page for distutils, the module. Yeah. So what does this do? As you can see, this, this is in the Python docs. It's in the standard library. But you can also see that it's deprecated with removal plan for Python 3.12. So it's definitely going away. It's going away. It's on the way out. Yeah. And it's been on its way out for a long, long time. How long? Around? Yeah, I don't know the years there, actually. But the, but a long time. A long time. And yeah. The thing that has kind of taken over from this utils is called setup tools. Setup tools. In contrast to this utils, this is not part of the standard library. So it's kind of been a thing that you need to install. But it is also more powerful, and it's something that has been changing towards being more and more modern. So originally, Setup Tools was a, just a drop-in replacement for these utils. Okay, so you could just swap one in for the other, and it would still work. Right. And then they have done a lot of improvements to that Setup Tools to make it a better system. Cool. But still, for many years, it was the only way to really set up Python packages was to run Setup Tools, and it was kind of its own thing that we're then just defining standards by being the tool everyone used. Okay. So then we started doing PEPs, which essentially means that we set standards for how things should be. And uh, the, there is a decent list that we have in one of our articles where we show the history of, um, of Python packaging. Uh, this one called Publish Open Source Python Package to PyPI. And if we just look at the history there, get to know Python packaging, we can scroll down a little bit here and see that there's a list of some of the most important PEPs that over the years have now defined how should packages be set up. Right. Wheels, version numbers, dependencies, backends, build systems, project metadata, editable installs. Lots of technical words and technical documents that you may dive into. You probably don't want to and shouldn't. <laughs> uh, at least not just to get your snake running. Right. <laughs> so we're not going to dive into the details of this kind of more just say that things have changed, right? So that's right. where we're coming from. There was Python, as we can see, has a fairly messy history with packaging. But the place that we kind of arrived at now is actually very neat and clean. So what we're going to show here is how can we now create a local package of snakes say that will then just run and work beautifully. All right, so we want to create our package in the relatively new way to create packages now. Yes. So how do we do that? So this now all is defined in a file called pyproject.tumble. Let's create the file in the top directory above snake say. Above snake say. Okay, interesting. So we'll kind of keep the code in one place and then we'll keep the definition of it one directory up. Okay, PyProject Tomo. Yes, and uh, what this file does is that it contains information about Python projects. That's kind of where the name comes from. And the Tomo there is the file format that is a configuration file that's typically fairly readable, and we'll see that it's mostly intuitive. So what this replaces is the setup.py and setup.cfg files that we would have before. Right. So if you've done some packaging earlier, you may have seen things like setup.py, as you say, setup.cfg, and, and files like this. We don't need those anymore. We can just use pyproject.com. Just the one file. That's fantastic. Yeah. And also, if you have other Python tools helping you with development, those can usually also be configured in the same file. So things like black and... Uh -huh. So you can set your line length in pyproject.toml along with all the other configuration elements for your project. That's really cool. Yes. So to have a look at how to actually get started with this, there are a couple of places to look. Let's see, yeah. So on the Setup Tools homepage, they have a section called Configuring Setup Tools Using PyProject Tumble Files. And one thing you can just see on the top there is that this is fairly new. It's new in some version, but it's here. And then you can see that if you scroll down a little bit to the bigger text block there, so you can see here that it says things like build system, project, and optional dependencies, scripts, and things like this. So this is the definition of our project. Okay, so these are containing namespaces. 
And these are the values within that. So okay. you can kind of think of it like a dictionary. Yep. Like this would be a dictionary called Project, uh, although it's not a dictionary, it's a tomophile, but this is a way to think about it. Yeah, completely. Uh, if you parse this into Python, your end result is typically a nested dictionary. A nested dictionary. Okay. And if you're interested in more Tomo, Gerardner has another article called Python on Tomo, New Best Friends, where he gets very deep into everything that Tomo entails. Right. But yeah, in general, the syntax is very similar to Python. So you can kind of more or less right. guess at what it is. Tomo kind of won out for this because it's very easy to read, right? It's, it doesn't have many extra characters like something like JSON has. Exactly. One other file that we'll just take a quick look at, since we're a little bit diving into documentation here, is the PEP621. This was the PEP that kind of defines how these metadata should look. So you see it's called storing project metadata in pyproject.tumble. And uh -huh. if you just start scrolling down a little bit here, you'll see that we'll quite soon get to spelling out the, uh, there we go, the specifications. So the table name, you can see here, it starts saying that, okay, things should live inside a table named project. And if you scroll down one section more, you can see it says name. And now we can compare this to the setup tools page. And we'll see that we have project and we have the name there. So this is kind of the implementation. Well, we saw the specification in the PEP. Okay, so this follows the PEP for how you should structure your TOML file because you still have some freedom in how to define a TOML file. TOML isn't just a Python thing. Other languages use TOML. This is a PEP-defined structure for a TOML file for a Python package. Yeah, TOML by itself is a completely general configuration format, but mm -hmm. uh, the PEP kind of defines a schema that we need to follow so that PIP will understand it when it tries to install things. And I think we can now start to actually create our file. So if you start by copying the section called build system, Okay, just copy this. Copy this and put it into our PyProject Tumble file. Perfect. Okay, so I don't need to really understand anything that's going on here. I kind of just need to copy paste it. Yeah. And the reason we need to do this is that Setup Tools is no longer the only way to install packages. There are other ways to do it with systems like Flit is one, Poetry is another, and so on. Right, Poetry. Poetry was, they'd used PyProject Tumble for a while before before Python started using it in this way, right? Well, yeah, so, so they started using PyProject Tumble once Python kind of decided in an earlier PEP than the one we were looking at here, that PyProject Tumble should be used for project specification. Okay, so this was sort of at the beginning before things have started to move in this direction in a major way. Yeah, it's kind of at the very start when they really started to define, we need a specification for packaging. So an idea of using pyproject.tumble for a project specification is quite an old idea. And slowly, different build systems like Poetry have started to use it. And, and now Python itself with pip is saying, okay, now, now we're in the stage where we can get on board with all of this as well. Yeah. So at the moment, I believe that uh, Poetry still uses pyproject.tumble, but with slightly different names and things. Okay, so it has a slightly different specification that doesn't follow the PEP. Right. Exactly. But they are moving towards implementing the PEP as well. Okay. So in the future, Poetry will essentially use, we can use exactly the same file. Except we just change setup tools to Poetry, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So we'll change the build system. And similarly, if we want to use Flit, we should be able to use the same project so that we will soon set up. Right. But just change the build system. Okay. And why would you want to change your build system? Yeah, so, so different build systems have different capabilities in general. So setup tools is kind of a fairly basic one. It's the most common. Common one. That's because of its history, really. And it's quite powerful. While Flit comes from a place where we just want to do things. Simple things should be simple. Uh -huh. So if, if you have a very simple system, then Flit tries to make the setup much easier. And especially it kind of integrates nicely with what you already have in Git or version control and things like that. Okay, so... Once you get much more experience with creating packages and stuff, then you might want to look at what different build systems can offer you for your, basically for your own workflow as a developer. Right. And it might be slightly different from project to project. For instance, if we have things that depend on C extensions, then you mm -hmm. might want to look at a different build system than if you have one with just pure Python and so on. Okay, so by C extensions, you mean 
extensions or files or parts of the program that run in a different language than Python that you have to sort of wrap and bring into Python. Right, exactly. Let's see, so we've set up our build system and now we need to start defining some names. Okay, we'll save it. And then now we can have a look at our directory. So which files do we have defined here? And we can see that the important ones is that we have the folder snakesay and we now have the file pyproject.tml. And it's outside the folder. That's outside the snakesay folder. So does it make sense to perhaps create another folder to contain all of this stuff? Yeah, typically you want to have one folder for your project. So we could potentially just do that as well. Right, because having this in sort of your main, right now we're in a real Python folder, but this would be sort of your home folder where you're building different projects. So maybe we'd want to actually create. And would we just call this the... Yeah, we, we could just call this Snakesay as well, but maybe for clarity, let's call it Snakesay project. Yeah, and because we already have a folder here called Snakesay, it's not going to let us. Right. So I'm just going to make that and then move Snakesay into Snakesay project. And now you also want to move the Pi project tunnel into Snakesay project. Right, now we also want to move the Pi project tunnel into Snakesay project. Now if we go into Snakesay project, and we see a list here. Okay, now we have everything we need in here. Exactly. Okay. So now we want to try to install this. Okay, typically what you want to do also is to install this into a virtual environment. So let's create a VEM here as well. You can just install it into your global Python install. Depending on what you want this for, then you can do that. But just for repeatability's sake, we're going to create a virtual environment here. And you'll notice the minus M flag here, which is the recommended way to call VEMV and just calling the VEMV, VEMV as is convention. Okay, so now we want to activate our VEMV and on Windows PowerShell, this is done by calling this. And on Linux, it will be source VEMV bin activate. Okay, so now we have a uh, activated virtual environment. So now we've defined a build system, but in this PEP621 that we looked at, we saw that there were some other things that are needed, like the name and so on. So if we now create a table here called project, and then here below it, you can just type name equals, and then we'll do a string called snake say. Snake say, yeah. So now we have defined the name of our project. And there are a couple of other things that we also should define. So I guess if you just quickly jump back to the pep, we can see here that we have name and version. Both of these should be specified. Okay. But otherwise, the rest of the things are not that necessary, especially for a local version. A lot right. of these are really convenient if you put stuff in PipeYoung. But uh, yeah, what's nice to add in here is a name, and then we could potentially add in a version if we want to specify that as well. Okay, so let's put in a version. And how do we specify that? So that should just be a string, as you have there. And then we can kind of come up with whatever versioning scheme we like to use. But yep. no, so for now, let's just say that we have our first version. So we'll call this version 1.00. Okay, so this is sort of fully developed. Yeah, we're ready to use it ourselves. We're ready to use it ourselves yeah. because, yeah, we're not thinking about releasing this project to the public. It's something we want to use locally. Hmm. But we are ready to do that now. We are finished sort of main development, so we can just say that's version one for yeah. us. Okay. Okay, and now let's just save this file and let's try to install it. So how do we install this? We're in the Snakesay project. We're in the Snakesay project. We're inside the virtual environment we created. And now we can just use more or less the same pip install command we usually use, so python minus m pip install. And now we come to the difference, because here typically we'd now just say something like pip install pandas, pip install Django, and so on. Right. Now we want to pip install our directory. So we should pip install the directory name. And since we're inside of the directory that we want to install, inside the directory that contains the pyproject.tml file, we just use a dot. So we're in this project here, the Snakesay project, and this is the project that has the pyproject.tml. And inside, 
this folder, there is the snake say the actual package that we want to install. There's your code, right? Right. Okay, so we've heard to that with a dot. Yeah, and then there is one difference that we might come into with the project that we're writing ourselves versus something like Pandas. Right. And that's that we might want to change the source code a bit. Right. Once we've been using it for a while, we might say, oh, actually, we want to, we want to change this. Right. So that might mean we have to reinstall this. Yes. So typically, that would mean that you then need to reinstall it to get those changes. But right. while we're developing, that's not very convenient. Right. Yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Yeah. And we're kind of back to almost like compiling in other languages. Right. So pip has a flag called editable, or just minus E, typically. So we can throw in a minus E in front of the dot. And this means that it's not kind of freezing our project. So instead, it's referring directly to our source code. So any change we make there pop up immediately in our project. Okay. So now we're ready to just install it. So now we can see that it's saying it's installing build dependencies. And this is based on this build system thing that we define in our pyproject.toml. And if we look into here, we can see that some places it says editable. That's coming from our minus E flag. But in the end, you can see that it installed Snake Say version 1. Great. Now that means that we can basically call it any way we like and from anywhere? Yeah, let's try it. So now we remember that we had issues where we couldn't do both Python minus M Snake Say and Python Snake Say. Mm -hmm. Now we should be able to do both. Okay, cool. So now we can just do snake say, mm -hmm. sleep type, tall man, cup. Cool, that's working. And that was the one that wasn't working before. Because in the code, we were saying from snake say import snake. That broke that way. Exactly. This meant that we needed to use the minus M flag. Exactly. But now it's working. And I assume that the minus M flag will also work. Great. Does. And this is even cooler now because now you can even go out of this project. Wow. And you can now run your minus M version. And it runs from here as well. Okay, great. So if we go into Python. Yes, so now you can even import snakes, eh? And if we can even now run the uh, from snakes, eh, import snake. Yeah, exactly, and run our snake.say command here. Great. So this gives us a load of flexibility. Yeah, it gives you all the conveniences of install packages, because that's exactly what we've done. And now there's no reason to ever think about the path again. Right. And also, it prevents us from having to think about relative imports as well, because even if we're in a very deep subfolder of our package, we can still just say, from snake, say import snake. Yep. So the imports are all consistent all the time. You can just always start at snake, say, and find whatever you're looking for. What if we wanted to take this the last step further and just say, is it possible for me, for example, if I'm just here, just to say snake say and then have something run? Yes, it is. And um, what we're talking about then is essentially having an entry point script or converting our Python script into an entry point or something like this, where it's recognized by the terminal that you're running in. And that is supported by the pyproject.toml. So we could jump back a little bit to the documentation for this. So in the documentation, you can find at the bottom there, there's something called project scripts. And this gives us the possibility to add in these kind of scripts that can just be run as if they're terminal commands. So we can add a project.scripts section to our pyproject.toml file. And here, this example is kind of nice because it kind of shows the different parts that we need to specify. So the my script part there is just the name of your script. So this one we can say snake say. Snake say, for instance, 
although just to be clear it doesn't need to be the name of the folder right. or anything like this hmm. it's an independent we can just call it snake or whatever we want snaky right. snaky and then the package so, so now we're into the kind of python land so we have the package module and function okay so here we need now to think about okay what is the package that we want to call and that is the snake say package what is the module that we want to call and that is the main thunder main thing so here we'll just be double underscore main double underscore okay we have to be explicit with the main here yes and then there's a function and now we should go back to our main.py file and see which function do we want to call and you can see here that there is no function for us so that gives us one small little change that we can also make here is to create a function that we can call. So if we put this snake say into a main function, for instance, and then, yeah, just move this one in there. And now if we want to just keep this still functioning as it used to, we should call main at the bottom. So that if you call main.py, it runs the main function, but it also gives us a reference that we can use in pyproject.com. Right. Okay, so we need this little change to make this mm. this script work. Yeah, and we can just call main here. Exactly. Great. So now you can uh, let's just do this. If we go to the command line and type snaky, you'll see that that doesn't work. Right. Even though it's an editable install, right. This is something that you need to do something else to actually get it working. Yeah. So the editable install will pick up anything you change in the code itself. So it has picked up that we now have a main function. Right. But it hasn't picked up that we have defined something new in the pyproject.tumble file. Okay. So when we do changes in the pyproject.tumble file, we need to pip install it again. Okay. And you just do the same command from the same place. Exactly. From here, python m pip install e dot yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, I see that it found the existing, uninstalled it, and then installed the new version. Yep, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. So that means that now I can just go wherever I want and call Snakey. Yes, you can. Now we get to show even one more thing that we should fix, because now we got two snakes. Yeah. What happened there? What did happen there? So now, if we think about this, if we can go back to the source code for main, and the main.py source code, and we can see that every time the main.py file is loaded, it runs main. Mm -hmm. So that's the first snake. And then, as part of the snakey thing, we also say that we want to run the main. Okay, so there's something doing an importing process here, right? It's importing this file. Exactly. And whenever you import a Python file, it runs the file. So it's going to run main. Yeah. But then it's also going to say, oh, I need the main function to call it. So, and then it's calling it again. Hmm. Okay, so that's definitely not something we want. Right. So there's a somewhat weird Python convention for how to fix this. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something I guess we can call the name main idiom. And it spells out the name dunder uh, and checks whether that's equal to main dunder. And there should be some equals somewhere in your code there. Oh, yes. Name equals. So this dunder name is a special variable that just gets a name from the file it's running, so to speak. And with this, now we should only see one snake. Right. And since it's an editable install, we don't need to reinstall anything because we haven't changed anything in the Pi Project Tumble. We've just changed stuff in the source code. Yep. And now we can call Snakey hello from anywhere. And now it works perfectly. And I can go anywhere I like and have access to this Snakey command. Exactly. Yeah. So now you have really created a tool that you can use wherever you are on your computer, as long as it's in your environment. Fantastic. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, because we only need one file now as well, and everything seems to just work. So do you think that the Python community will move towards PyProject Tomal very quickly? Are we there? What stage are we at with adoption here? Right. So, so as we talked about a bit earlier, there's some messy history here, but PIP has been doing a lot of upgrades the last year or two. 
in supporting the Pi Project Tamil workflow as is defined in this PEP621. So the cool thing now is that this works on the newest versions of PIP. This just runs and it works for editable installs, which was a problem for a while. It runs on regular package installs. Yeah, it, it just works. So what we're seeing now is that there's actually several new different build systems like Flit and Poetry already support the Pi project, the Tamil. The Poetry one will, in version two, it will essentially be reusable, the, the file that we set up. So right now, Poetry does support the same type of workflow, just the Pi project format is slightly different, but they're making updates so that the format is going to be exactly the same between setup tools and Poetry. Yeah, and the good things with that is essentially things get standardized and it's easier to switch build systems. But working with Poetry today is already no worries at all. It, it is very simple to use and it's kind of exactly the same philosophy. It's just slightly different syntax. This is a really cool and seems to be a very widely supported and basically where we're going with Python. Can this be considered standard? Can I just say this is the standard way to do things? Yes, clearly. It's all supported by PEPs, which are by definition how Python is standardized. So this is the way. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. One more question. I saw this interesting folder come up here. Snakesay.egg-info. What's, what's an egg? Yeah, so there's a bit of Python history again. I think we briefly mentioned the word wheel a little bit. Right. It was mentioned in, in one of the PEPs that that define the whole build system. Yeah, so wheel is a built Python artifact, which is essentially a zip file that contains a package. So sometimes when you install a big package like pandas or numpy, you'll see a bunch of wheels being downloaded. Yeah, and by default, almost any package that you install, it will be based on wheels. Right, it's, the, it's kind of a standard way to just zip things together. Yeah, but the wheels, as you say, are more important for packages like pandas and numpy, where there are things that need to be compiled because you can have then system-specific wheels. So you can have things that are ready-made for Windows or Linux and so on. Right. So it's easy to install for people. The egg was the predecessor to wheels. Uh-huh. So the name is still found in this directory, although I don't think we're actually creating eggs anymore. This particular directory is then actually containing information so you can see some of the data that we have been added here, you can recognize from what we've been doing. So there is a, a console scripts, for instance, that just points to our package. And one thing that we could look at, just to get some information from the snakesay.eginfo. So if you go into the terminal again and start a Python REPL, there is a package called importlib metadata. So you can do from importlib import metadata. So this metadata thing can pick up information from about packages. And for instance, we could do metadata.version and then just give it uh, uh, the name of the package as a parameter. So this is a function, so just call it with snake say as a string. And there we see that this is version 1.00, which was what we defined in the Pi project, the tunnel file. And uh, metadata has a few other things that it can then look up in the same manner. Right. And this grabs its information from that egg info. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's sort of an artifact, but it still contains important information. And even though there's no real egg, it's just a name that kind of stuck. Exactly. The, the same format is actually used then for other packages. And the reason that it popped up into this folder was that this is an editable install, so our source code lives here. If we hadn't installed this as an editable install, this information would live somewhere else. Okay. But this is definitely something that you want to add to a git ignore file. You don't want to be committing the egg info to your source. Correct. But you definitely want to be committing the Pi project. That's where all the important information lives. Exactly. Excellent. So basically, we've taken these two files that were not in any folder, really. And we've taken it out and put it in a folder so that we can call it as modules. And then we've taken that out again into a high-level project folder so that we could have a pyproject.toml. That means we can build this package and have an editable install on our activated Python version. 
Again, we can do this with the global Python version if we want, but in this example, we did with the BEMV. Yep. Great. So we can officially say this is the way to work? Yeah. We mentioned briefly that it used to be setup.py, setup.cfg, and those things still work. But at some point, which is probably way into the future because of all the legacy, they may stop, while pyproject.toml is the way forward. Cool. Well, thank you for this walkthrough of how to set up your project. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for listening to our code conversation. We've covered a lot of ground, but the main takeaway for you is to start using pyproject.toml and install your projects locally with an editable install. You'll want to do this even when you're just developing a personal project. We've gone over project directory structure, Python packaging history, the pyproject.toml spec, configuring pyproject.toml, creating an editable install, and using it. If you're interested in diving deeper into this topic, here are a few recommended tutorials to get stuck into. If you're at the stage of distributing your project, check out how to publish an open source Python package to PyPI. It's really not as complicated as it might seem at first glance. To dive deep into the Python import system, check out Python import, advanced techniques and tricks. To understand a bit more about what wheels are, check out what are Python wheels and why should you care? That's been Everyday Project Packaging with PyProject.toml. See you around.